Unfortunate doesn't begin to describe my series. This game rewards blind luck and nothing else. I am beyond convinced at this point. After getting completely tooled by scheduling with my opponent, changing times on me last minute, and refusing to provide confirmation prior to the day of the match as to play times, losing this way somehow felt even worse than I had thought possible. My preparation was superior, my play was superior, and I lost. So I don't see a reason to continue engaging in an activity where what is within my control is overwhelmingly outweighed by what is not. I am done with competitive Pokemon, and you won't get a fond farewell. This community is infected to its roots with a degenerative disease that grows stronger over time but stops short of killing its host. Tournaments used to have a competitive spirit at their heart. This has been transplanted and replaced with an artificial organ that feeds on vitriol and mockery from insecure little boys that heckle by the sidelines and tear each other to shreds over scraps of attention. The environment we fostered has trapped us all like this in a vicious cycle, and escaping it requires acceptance of the harshest reality we all scramble to explain away. That none of the countless straining efforts we put ourselves through here will ever amount to one single shining glimmer of significance. I would make this the end, but World Cup is still ongoing, and I would never leave so many great friends out to dry, so I'll suffer through a few more games for them. One last thing before I leave you all to react with disdain, ridicule, and self-righteous fervor. Before you do everything in your power to minimize my words and thoughts, box them up and shove them behind some cobweb corner of your memory, and hope they disappear forever as a stain on your finite time ground to dust. From this moment on, nothing you say matters to me. The foulest insults you hurl with intent to wound will calmly settle at the earth before my feet, and the venom you spit will bring all the pain of a warm summer breeze. You are less than anything you can conceive, while I carry on, brimming with joy distilled from detachment. That was the monologue and rage quit of Lavos, one of the all-time greats of the game. If you want more tournament content, make sure to subscribe, but Prime Lavos was one of the best players ever, and 2019 was the prime of Prime Lavos. Earlier in the year, in Smogon's most elite tournament, Smogon Premier League, a tournament where you play on a team with each player playing one tier, Lavos pulled off the best record ever, a 12-in-1 stat line playing mainly the Generation 2 tier. This wasn't a stat padded 12-in-1. He was playing the best players week after week and getting huge wins and was leading his team to the playoffs. Then, in the playoffs, he won his semifinals game, and then won the semifinals tiebreaker too, flexing into a tier he had never played all season, Generation 5. The tiebreaker is a best of three where the top three players of each team compete if their teams end up in a tie. Then, even further, he won his game in the finals, and then in the finals tiebreaker, he won a 293 turn game to win the championship. In the best single season performance ever, he essentially won the MVP, won the championship, and then won the finals MVP too. The context of 2019 Lavos makes this story all the more interesting. After the Premier League, the next tournaments for the year were Smogon's World Cup of Pokemon, where he played for US West, and Smogon Classic, the tournament that only has gens 1 through 5 and is meant to find the best old gens player. Both of these tournaments ran with some overlap. The Smogon Classic is a tournament worth winning, and it's a feather in the cap of any player because it shows your mastery of the older generations. The Classic starts with 5 cups from gens 1 through 5, where you get points for winning in each cup and the top point scorers qualify for a 16 person playoff bracket. Lavos continued his dominance of the Gen 2 tier, winning the Gen 2 cup and getting enough points in other cups to qualify for playoffs as a number one overall seed. The playoffs are a best of five with all five tiers and Lavos showed no signs of stopping. He swept the 16 seed in three games and then swept the 8 seed in three games too. That set up the now infamous Clash vs McMagan, the number 5 seed. McMagan was also one of the top players of Smogon, and he won the Gen 3 Cup to lock in the number 5 seed. Lavos won Game 1 in Generation 2, and then in Game 2 he won again, but this time in Generation 3. He took the Gen 3 game from the Gen 3 champion. He now had a 2-0 lead in the best of 5. In Game 3, in Generation 1, he didn't get completely robbed, but he did get unlucky and lost the game. Then, he lost in Game 4 in Gen 5. He used a Triple Dragon plus Magnezone Core. 
Drag Mag, as it's called, is a popular team structure in Generation 5 because there's no fairy type. There's a lot of powerful dragons in Gen 5, and with Magnism's Magnet Pull to remove Steel types, it's a very threatening playstyle. But here, it couldn't get the job done versus McMagan's Rain Team. All of a sudden, it was Game 5 in Generation 4, DPP. Lavos leads with Heatran and McMagan leads with Gyarados. Gyarados is an anti-lead. In Gen 4, most leads try to go for Stealth Rock or Spikes because of how powerful hazards are. An anti-lead is when you pick something that goes for a kill straight away. You start off immediately more threatening, but the trade-off is that you have to get Stealth Rock up later instead of immediately. The anti-lead pays off here with Gyarados having the type advantage versus Stealth Rock Heatran. Dragon Dance Gyarados is threatening enough to make Lavos want to switch out. He first goes to his own Gyarados to get off an Intimidate, and then goes to Jirachi. But his Jirachi has Thunder Punch specifically for Gyarados. Gyarados uses Waterfall, but then it flinches the Jirachi. He goes back to his own Gyarados and tries to use his own Dragon Dance to win. But McMagan has the right moves and has Stone Edge to knock out Lavos' Gyarados. Breloom comes in next with Spore, but Gyarados not only has a Lumberry, but also has the move Taunt, and is able to force another KO with the little help of another Waterfall Flinch. Lavos' last ditch effort is to go back to Heatran with Focus Sash and Explosion. Explosion in the older generations is extremely powerful because it has a hidden mechanic where it has the defense stat of the opponent. Without the Intimidate from turn 1, Explosion can knock out the Gyarados. But then, disaster. Gyarados flinches Heatran 2 and it's all over. Nothing else can take on the Dragon Dance Gyarados anymore, and he forfeits. From two 3-0 sweeps earlier and a 2-0 lead here, his Smogon Classic run ends in the semifinals, and it sparks arguably the greatest monologue in the history of monologues. McMagan would go on to win the finals too and get the coveted Smogon Classic trophy. Lavos would get banned from the site for other issues related to toxicity. The rage quit was more of an epitome of his growing attitude towards the game and the community. But there was still one more tournament going on at the time, the World Cup of Pokemon. Lavos and US West had just won the World Cup semifinals versus Germany and were now set up for a finals showdown versus Brazil. Lavos himself could not play because of the ban, but thanks to his team building advice, he helped US West to a World Cup victory to close out 2019, although he himself was not technically part of the team anymore. Not much is known of Lavos today. From what I could find, he's cut off all contact. The last he's been seen was when he was apparently a top 5 US Hearthstone player before vanishing from that too, seemingly content to be off the radar. <laughs>